on this, the Lord's Day, we join together in singing the reign of God. We will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, 
We may use the things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise in understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Solomon asks for a wise heart, and God is delighted with the request. Solomon asks for a wise heart. Wisdom. Imagine you are an architect and you build a miniature cardboard model of a whole new city with all the best of ancient and modern accents and all the greatest amenities. You build this cardboard model of a whole city, then you spray this thick lacquer, invisible, on it that hardens and it's invisible. So that lacquer is covering every single corner, every single horizontal or vertical surface, every single curve, etc. And the lacquer is hard. 
Now imagine you are a magician standing at that cardboard model covered with hard, invisible lacquer, and you snap your fingers, and all the cardboard disappears. Yet the lacquer forms remain. To get through that model city now, you'd have to still sense the lacquer forms and move about always with them in mind. The forms are still there, and they're real, and they have to guide the person getting through that city. The wisdom of God is like those invisible forms. God created the world with wisdom that expresses his goodness, his truth, his beauty. Wisdom is the received form, the shape, the design of creation which God had within his own mind, within himself, before he actually created anything. And everything in the world then, once it's created, is somehow coated, filled with, coated over, guided with God's wisdom. When we're talking about the wisdom of a human being like Solomon in our first reading, then we're talking about the ability of a person to move well through the city of God. I'm stealing that from St. Augustine. He wrote this amazing work on the city of God, everything of God in the world. So wisdom, human wisdom, is the ability of a person to move well, to know how to move well through the city of God in the world. Keeping in mind there is also an overlapping city of this world, a city of darkness. The wise human person is the one who can perceive all the shapes, all the curves, morally, spiritually, all the horizontal and vertical lines, morally, spiritually, of God's great design for the world and for humanity, and maneuver according to that plan. That's human wisdom. Finding the treasure in the field from Jesus' parable is like stumbling upon wisdom. The man in the gospel parable stumbles upon a buried treasure, and he sells everything to buy that land so that he can have that treasure. Why would the man sell everything and purchase the land with the treasure? Because the treasure is so valuable that it will sustain that man for the rest of his life. Well, if you and I stumble upon the wisdom of God, understanding how to maneuver well through this world he created, then we have stumbled upon a treasure that will sustain us through all the crazy ups and downs of this world. What will the wisdom look like that can sustain us through our entire life? It will look like Jesus Christ. Jesus who says he is the way, the truth, and the life to live. No wonder St. Paul calls Jesus the wisdom of God. Because Jesus is the one through whom all things are created. So he reflects God's wisdom. Everything's touched by Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the first one to maneuver a life of perfect love according to God the Father's perfect design. So he's the wisdom of God. And a life lived wisely is a life that will be lived in Jesus Christ. That's the perfect wisdom. It's the only perfect wisdom. Since you and I have stumbled upon the mystery of life in Jesus Christ, especially life pouring out from his sacrifice on Calvary, then we have what it takes to accomplish our entire life by the rich design of God. Life, living a life hidden in Jesus Christ, we will live a life coated with God's wisdom, replete, full of God's wisdom shaped by God's wisdom. Most profoundly, the person hidden in Jesus Christ, most will be able to live vibrantly. 
even through the dynamic of Calvary, which is the most profound wisdom of God, and everyone experiences a little bit of Calvary in life. Jesus, the wisdom of God, comes to us body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. St. Louis de Montfort called Jesus incarnate wisdom, wisdom in the flesh. As we approach Jesus in this Eucharist, may we each commit ourselves to walk Jesus' own way through this world, to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's appreciate the rich treasure we have been given by stumbling upon the mystery of Jesus Christ in Holy Mass. This treasure sustains us throughout our entire life. Now we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with great trust in our Lord's goodness and mercy towards us, we bring to him our needs. For the church throughout the world, that amidst trials and tribulations, she may work for good for those who love God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise the ministry of confessor and spiritual director within the church, may they be granted the understanding heart of Solomon, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may stand together to combat the scourges of violence and terrorism and promote the values of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the coronavirus pandemic and for all those who have fallen ill from this disease, that God will bring comfort and healing to our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are searching for the pearl of great price, that they may find in Jesus, our God and King, the fulfillment of all their desires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may follow the law of the Lord and love his commands, seeking to be united ever more closely to his will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed and the intentions of this Mass especially Mary Adelsberger, Geraldine Brubaker, Franklin Nye, Chester Schwalick, Ruth and Thomas Ray, Tony, Anne, and David Ward, and the living and deceased members of the Chester Schwalick family, that the angels may lead them into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray also for Czech Kualik, who celebrates 90 years today, thanking the Lord for uh, an abundance of life and praying for many more years of great wisdom and God's consolation. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. 
All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your for the great and glorious evening. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. 
as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, 
offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Beginning on July 30th and continuing each Thursday, we will be having adoration of the Blessed Sacrament on the altar throughout the day. We know this devotion has been greatly missed and we are eager to begin again. There is no limit on how many can be present since it will be in the church, but we do need to know we have at least two people per hour. There is a sign-up sheet in the Connect Center in the gathering space. Next Sunday at the 8 a.m. Mass, the Dean of our Deanery, Father Mike Zacharias from St. Michael, Finley, will officially install Father Pegmeyer as our pastor. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. 